second date, November 8th, um, the, the second annual SAGE table event um, is happening in our fellowship hall next door. If you are interested in attending, you may let Lonnie know. Lonnie, raise your hand. Um, John Lankford, please come forward. John Lankford. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the shrimp boil is two weeks from yesterday. So um, I'm actually behind on it because of, I've been sick. We had a hurricane and anyway, I'm um, I need to sell at least 100 tickets. I've sold 67. So I would like for the people who have not bought tickets to see me after service. And I'll make sure that you get one. Uh, if you know anyone who wants to come, um, and can't, doesn't have money, I'll make sure they have tickets too. So um, anyway, um, this is our last fundraiser year and we really would like to make this a big one because all the money goes to the church to support of our community. So anyway, thanks for your time and I'll see you after church. Yes. And one more thing, every Sunday at five o'clock we bowl. Um, I have people who say they're coming and maybe I'll show up or whatever and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't. But I'd love to have as many as would like to come out. Uh, we have 25 and 20. Um, if you'd like to uh, join us, it's three games, it's only five dollars. Uh, they give us a special price because we're so well. So, you know, and um, they know exactly who we are, and they appreciate us being there. So, do you have to bowl, sir? Do you have to bowl? No, you do not have to bowl. When you want to come and be a cheerleader, you can bring your pom poms and show up. <laughs>
join me in the call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Open your lives to the Spirit who satisfies all things. And let us sing songs to the one who loves and endures forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the processional hymn. Father, Creator God, with your Son, our Savior Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, who is with us always, we come to you again this day to praise and honor you and to thank you for all that you have done for us. Be with us now as we gather this day to share with each other the love that you have given us. Open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to hear your words this day so that we may be more intimately with you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. They are able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since they themselves are subject to weakness. And because of this, they must offer sacrifice for their own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you, and you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
please rise as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O God. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. So he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said back to him, Grant us to sit with you in your glory, one at your right hand and one at your left. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We can. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the others heard this, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of Hope. Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit.
pray with me, please? Holy and all-loving God, once more we express our thanks to you this morning for breathing the very breath of life again into us this morning, allowing us to rise from our slumber and gather into this holy place We thank you for your blessings upon us. We ask that you continue to bless us, that you should speak into our hearts so that we may continue to grow into our knowledge of you. For this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I saw on um, on the news yesterday that there are only... Ten days until Halloween, 14 days until the end of daylight savings time, which I love. It gets dark nights and early, so I don't feel bad about going to bed at five. (laughs) (laughs) Only 32 days until Thanksgiving, and then the big one, only 66 days until Christmas. Yeah. Now... I am not normally someone who starts looking forward to Christmas in the middle of October, but I have to admit I have been thinking a lot about Christmas for the past couple of weeks, and that the sooner it gets here, the better. Not necessarily for any of the usual suspect nostalgia reasons, although I'm very much looking forward to our Christmas concert and Christmas Eve services this year. The real reason I'm so looking forward to the arrival of Christmas this year is that I really want this year to be over. There were indeed a lot of good things that happened this year, and I do keep a gratitude list of things I need to remember that were good this year so I I don't completely descend into a pit of gloom sometimes. But the year is coming to an end on a note of hardship and suffering for many of us. Some would say, and in fact we do say, that this change that occurred, especially inside this little community, from one of, how many are my blessings, let me count the ways, to, come on God, don't let go of me now that this change in atmosphere started in August with the death of Wilmingtonian extraordinaire and St. Jude's patriarch, Bob Jenkins. And then, just as we were recovering from that, five weeks later, Hurricane Florence blows through. The floods, the devastations, all of our lives turned upside down for so many weeks all the things we have been talking about the past several weeks as we are all trying to do our best to somehow make life normal again. So, you know, 2018 will not become a year where I will refuse to look back upon it fondly. But it has had and continues to have its share of suffering attached to it. And we have been looking at the subject of suffering now. Reading about Job and all of his sufferings and and how to answer that eternal question, (coughs) why do bad things happen to good people? And we've learned that, of course, that's, that's not really a good question to ask. Or at least try to force an answer to. Because the conventional explanation for many, is that God sends us burdens because God knows we're strong enough to handle them. And that explanation simply has it all wrong. God does not send us problems just to see. God sends us help and answers to get through our problems. For we know that when we try to deal with things on our own, usually blaming God and a whole lot of other people for our fateful situation, when we do that, 
we invariably end up finding that we simply are not strong enough to handle the situation on our own. And so we grow weak. And then we get tired. And we usually get really angry. The key, which we discovered last week, was not to let our traumas and associated angers get the better of us and then ultimately define us. But rather, if we can dig into that reservoir of faith, we will find a way through it. And that is why it is so important that we cultivate and build up that reservoir of faith now so that it is available when we most need it. When we do find ourselves at the limits of our own strength and courage, if we just have that that one nugget of something else to hold on to, then something unexpected happens. we find the reinforcement we are looking for, and in that, we find the knowledge that we are not alone, that God is on our side, and that we can manage to go on. There's a famous book that was written uh, back in the 1970s, I believe, and it's titled, When Bad Things Happen to Good People written by Rabbi Harold Kushner. He wrote this book in response to the death of his young son. And he writes, Every one of us, at one time or another, has faced a scary situation. Prayed for help, and found out that we were a lot stronger and a lot better to handle it than we ever would have thought we were. In our desperation, we opened our hearts in prayer. And what happened? We didn't, did not get a miracle to avert a tragedy. Instead, we discovered people around us, God beside us, and strength within us to help us survive the tragedy. That, he says, is the best example of a prayer being answered that I can offer. And so it was last week that we began to talk about how there seemed to be now this communal sigh of relief that was finally happening in our lives and our community. A sigh that doesn't necessarily say, Everything's just fine now, but rather a sigh that says, I'm going to get through this. We are going to get through this. And that felt good, finally, to be able to say that last week out loud and to believe it. And it still feels good, and I still believe it. But just as we now know that we can get through this one, we know too that life moves on as well. And along with the sighs of relief for newfound joys, there is also a realization that suffering continues. I think that one of the blessings that evolves from coming through tragedies and traumas, particularly shared traumas, as we have done, is that we are a little more aware of the suffering of others. It's not all about us, suddenly. And a lot of people are suffering right now in their relationships, in their lives, in their health, in the health of those they love, 
in behaviors that are slowly destroying their lives. And then all of those things. We must find a way to transform our suffering or else, inevitably, we end up transmitting it to others and usually the ones closest to us. Our readings today highlight the fact that we are not alone in this world. And we are not alone in this life. And that God is with us. And the thing that makes our faith so great and unique is that not only is that God not only knows our sufferings, but suffers them with us. In Christ, God is so intimate with creation that God feels the pain of the world. God not only celebrates our joys, and, and, but empathizes with our pains. God understands because God experiences our lives from the inside, touched by everything. In contrast to all the other aloof little g-gods of the world, gods that really don't care what, goes, what happens to you in your life, it's all about something else, the personal God of our faith is able to heal our wounds because God feels our wounds. In our gospel story this morning, the disciples foolishly focus on earthly greatness and vestiges of power. They forget that God's grandeur is born both of creativity and suffering, Mm -hmm. and that those who follow Christ must themselves incarnate this tragic beauty that is God. They see greatness in terms of of power and control. And they see leadership leadership in terms of of placing themselves on on a higher spiritual pedestal than, than everybody else in the world. Well, Jesus takes them down a different path. for his relationship with God connects him with with human suffering. His spiritual enlightenment sensitizes him to our pain and suffering. And his humanity enables him to understand our temptations and all of our failures in order to bring healing to all those little broken places in our lives. Greatness is defined in terms of service and willingness to promote others' well-being and not our own, apart from others. The spirituality of Jesus and, and of Jesus' followers is revealed in his willingness to suffer for our healing simply to become nearer to us. Embracing our joys and our sorrows and imparting God's healing vision upon us. And in this way, nothing is too great or too small, too majestic or too fragile fragile for God's presence to be fully in our lives. God doesn't shy away from anything. <clears throat> when I found, found myself looking forward to Christmas this past week, I also spent time looking back over the events of this year. And I realized that I do not think it was coincidence that one of the major themes that popped up several times this year was that something's coming theme 
And it started way back like in February, I think. And we were never able to define it. And, it, you know, I, I never was, actually. And I started to get upset about that for a while, too, but then it would pop back up in another way. I mean, for a while, I thought it would be material things, you know, like books and book studies and things like that, and things we could, we could focus on and touch and do that would help promote our spiritual well-being. And those are good things, by the way. And then a little later on in the year, we started moving from something's coming to a lot of people started saying, well, I think it's already here. <laughs> we just need to acknowledge it. As we began to t take stock of and be thankful for all the ways we are already doing a lot of things together. Well, now we can add in the experiences of suffering that we have all traveled through, particularly in the past two or three months. And as long as we can learn to use our, our experiences for our benefit and for the benefit of all people, then I have no doubt that come Christmas Eve, we will be able to look back upon the entire year and give thanks. Just as we will continue to do all the things we currently do together that define us as a loving community, we will continue to find new ways to do things. New Bible studies, new book studies, new groups, new prayers, new ways of loving one another. And yes, we will be here for one another when tragedy strikes and suffering wells up in our lives once more. For it is in our ability to transcend these things that life becomes magical and not dull, spiritual and not empty. My friends, I know it's only the middle of October, but I think we need a little Christmas. And while I, I will savor all the days between now and then, I, I already have my Christmas wishes for all of you. And breaking with tradition, I hope you get them now so you don't have to wait 66 more days to open them. Oh, and God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Will you pray with me, please? God of life, we come to you from many places. Some of our hearts overflow with joy and gratitude. Others are barely hanging on to hope. Meet us where we are so that we might discover our wholeness and be able to continue to work ceaselessly for the care of all your people. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon us. Bless us in our work and in our rest. Bless us in our jobs that feed our souls and bless us in jobs that do not. Bless us in the long hours of caregiving and in the hours we have no idea how to fill. Come to us and show us how we might serve you. And Lord, enlarge the circles of our concern. Teach us to care for, for all of our sisters and brothers. Allow us to be the vessels of your mercy and healing to care for all things on this earth and to know your world as ours. Holy God, we pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now, my friends, let us take a moment of silence and allow that healing Holy Spirit of God to work within our hearts.
Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. So let us join with that heavenly choir of angels in that unending hymn of praise, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, blessed is the one who came down to earth so that we may all know the wonder of God's love. So with thanks and praise, let us proclaim again what is the mysterious and miraculous truth of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is here, and Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. And now let us all pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In memory of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer to you, O God, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. And we ask that you turn these simple elements of your creation into our spiritual nourishment once more, so that we may be filled with even just a sense of your grace and love and mercy, that we may then go out and share with a hungry and hurting world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he shared a meal and during it he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body offered for you, and as you do this, remember me, and I shall never, ever leave you. in the meal he took the cup giving thanks to God he lifted it up saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the cup of the new covenant and as you do this remember me and I shall ever ever be with you Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. My friends, here at St. Jude's, as in every single metropolitan community church, Around the entire world, we celebrate an open communion table, which at its very simplest means, you do not need to be a member of this church or or any church anywhere to come and receive these gifts now blessed by God for all of God's people. You may come to communion on your own, bring your friends and family. We offer communion by dipping the wafer into the juice, placing it into your mouth, and then offering you a, a small prayer. If you prefer to only receive the elements and return to your seat for your own personal private prayer. The station farthest over here will do that for you. But however you come, we ask that you do come and come just as you are. Come just as you
loving God, once more we say thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning and blessing us anew this day to which we all can say thank you and amen, amen. amen. <clears throat> and now if you would help me sing our closing song, it is number 635 in our hymnal. as you leave this holy place today. Go out into the world knowing that no matter the path you find yourself on this week, that God is with you every step of the way. Amen. 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 Amen.